are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. I'm well, David Steen, a heptathlete who won the only medal of the entire British women's team at the last Olympics. There's always one who has to show off, isn't there? <laughs> Debbie Smith. <laughs> with Gary and Rory as a comedian who, as a Spurs fan, worshipped the very ground that Gary Lineker walked on. That bit of turf about two feet from the goal line. <laughs> Jeff Green. <laughs> we start the ball rolling with goal celebrations. Gary, Rory and Jeff, your goal comes from the final of the Atlanta Olympic football tournament in which Nigeria beat Argentina 3-2. Canu. Oh, yes! the post, Celestine Babayaru. <laughs> By the way, for your information, Gary, that's called a header. <laughs> okay, so why did he do that? Do because think? he's a newborn foal. <laughs> <laughs> With, it shouldn't happen to a vet. He <laughs> looked like he was doing an impression of Danny Bear after a night with Les Ferdinand. <laughs> Here's the right answer. <laughs> I think it's something to do with an African tribal thing, possibly. Right. <laughs> Carry on. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> Around the world with Gary Lineker, famous anthropologist. No, you giving up? No. Okay. Yeah, we've given up. David. Had he just run the marathon? <laughs> <laughs> and he turned up, scored a goal, and his legs gave out. Yeah. Say that, that again without saying, did he run the marathon? Scored the goal. Scored the goal, and his legs gave out. One point, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The fact is that Baba Yaru was so happy his legs gave way and all the other players thought he was doing a celebration <laughs> and joined in. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh Here is the Belgian-based Nigerian to explain. While I was doing it, my colleagues were behind me doing the same thing that I was doing. And after the game, a lot of my friends, the spectators, they were like, Celestine, were you drunk before the game? I said, no, I'm not drunk. Why? I mean, when you're happy, you never know what you could do. Nigeria has a terrible human rights record, second only to Wimbledon. Maradona, <laughs> Maradona was banned from that match after failing to provide a urine sample. Mind you, you try pissing half a kilo of solid coke. <laughs> So, David Lee and Denise, we take you to Highbury. Here's Arsenal's Patrick Vieira scoring against Derby. This is Merson. And it's Adams. Vieira! 2-2 this time. Patrick Vieira. Vieira scored the goal, but Ian Wright and Nigel Winterburn took over the celebration. So, what's on the T-shirt? What's on the T-shirt? Well, unless I'm oh. really stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, now that's a dangerous thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're wrong, that makes you officially really stupid now. You know that. Go on. Well, it says right, doesn't it, on the t-shirt? Doesn't it? On the shirt? No, it's the shirt underneath that shirt. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been out with Tony Adams the night before? <laughs> and he had, like, a little bit of kebab there. And he's gone off like he's putting a shit because it was starting to stench. Is it a stain? No. Is it a stubborn stain? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just rub it with a bit of soap before you put it in. Why would I rub my knob with a bit of soap? <laughs> Maybe I should pull my shirt over my head because of the whiff. I don't know. Maybe I should pull my shirt over my head. Yeah. <laughs> That would be very rude. <laughs> He's trying to sell himself. He's got an advert for himself there. Gary had it once. It said, uh, second-hand striker for sale. <laughs> Only six yards on the clock. <laughs> that <what> hardly yeah. <laughs> Is that how he watches holding the baby? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Is it got on, on, on his T-shirt under there? Because he, he did it when the camera wasn't watching. So he's doing it to the fans, yeah. right? And obviously away from the dugout. Has he, has it got on it, help, I'm being held hostage against my will? <laughs> <laughs> I was at that game, uh, a two-all draw against Derby. Dean Sturridge scored one of the best goals I've seen against Arsenal this season, in fact. Um, and I think I'm right in thinking that's the most shirt-lifting seen at a football ground since village people played Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> He'd just been let off some disciplinary uh, action, I think, yeah. and had I Love the FA written on it. Absolutely correct, for one uh, point, yeah. It's all to do with an FA disciplinary charge. Ian Wright himself has the answer. Anything I do or say... Even if I parked, the, I parked the car wrong the other day, I thought I was going to get brought up on FA charge. <laughs> but, you know, on this rare occasion, um, they let me off with it, which um, was quite pleasing. So I had the uh, I Love the FA, and Nigel put... <laughs> so, when Arsenal scored, their players revealed a set of topical T-shirts. The last time a Forest striker scored, he unveiled the slogan, Repeal the Corn Laws Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have won, and Gary's team have won. Uh, before we go on to the next round, I'd just like to show you this. Uh. Gary Lineker, God no! <laughs> that was sent to us. It's remarkably lifelike, uh, except of course for the unrealistically tiny ears. That <laughs> the next round is our injury board. Each team picks a number from the board which reveals a sports person and a something. We need to know how the something disabled the sports star and prevented them from playing. Gary's team, choose a number. Eleven. <laughs> right, that Spanish golfer Sebi Ballesteros and a Bunsen burner. So how was the three times Open champion done in by a Bunsen burner? Did you think it was a golf team? Put the ball on him. It's a it? bloody difficult hole. <laughs> Is he trying to light one of his farts? <laughs> Is this one of those stories where you know you read in the paper, you know, I was, uh, you know, in casualty, people turn up, I was accidentally vacuuming the house in the news, oh, yeah, and yeah. someone and it sucked me knob. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, so they have to get the Hoover off. Is this one of or those where I had a frozen seven? fish and put it up, but when it, it thawed out, I couldn't bring it down because the gills opened. That was right. Is that another one? <laughs> Injury <laughs> and illness are not funny. I think he just bumped into an old flame. <laughs> I should get you right in holding the baby, mate. <laughs> Stoop that low. <laughs> Holding his clubs or doing was some sort of work, repairing his one of his golf clubs. Obviously, yeah. correct for three points. Yep. Yeah. Oh. It is that Sevy was heating his golf club over a Bunsen burner to bend it when he burnt his arm. <laughs> the Bunsen burner injury wasn't the end of Sevy's misery. He had to write up the results, giving the apparatus method and conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> so, David's team, pick a number, please. We we'll have eight, please. That Scottish sprinter Ewan Clark and a crisp packet. So how did the rapper injure the runner? It's just looking at that photograph. Yeah. Is that a crisp or is that Gary's ear that... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be wax and onion flavour then, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, I didn't know... Salt Scotland. and Winger, I think it means. Huh? <laughs> Salt and Winger. Denise, did, you, did you notice the moment you started talking, Dave? Just Shut up and I'm just not coming you. on this show Denise, again. I, let me have my speech. My say. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you put it so well... <laughs> I've never heard of this guy anyway. Well, look, he's, he's a sprinter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Denise... You, you sprint in your event, yeah? Yeah. And is it correct that you have to, that they tell you to stay as low as you can and as long as you can when you come out of the blocks? That's correct. Well, because I was thinking after a while, that is a bit self-defeating, isn't it? You know, if at 50 metres you're like wriggling along on your belly. <laughs> <laughs> that makes snakes very good sprinters, wouldn't it? You know, and you never see a snake in the Olympics unless limpids running, obviously. <laughs> Is it something really stupid, like, yes. he, he swallowed a free gift that came with the packet, and what was even more stupid was he had to actually send off for it. <laughs> <laughs> was he an, an extra in Braveheart? Sort of I don't remember the crisp scene in Braveheart. 
Oh, that was the director's cut. <laughs> okay, over to the grown-up steam. <laughs> Why am I on that packet of crisps? Why? Money, yeah. I suppose. Did you do anything for money? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea of this. Hand it, hand it across, go on. Hand it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, you and Clark made the classic mistake of trying to wipe some sweat from his forehead with a crisp packet oh, yeah. and cut his eyeball instead. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we've all done it. <laughs> it wasn't the actual cut that did the damage, it was when he poked his finger into the corner of his eye to get out the last few crumbs. <laughs> Isn't that, this is true, but when we phoned up his club, he runs for a tiny club called Petrivi. Yeah, I know Petrie, really. Oh, you know them, but you don't know him. Unfortunately, <laughs> you don't get any points for that, so... No, but we phoned up their club, it's this tiny club, and a baffling answer, the man answered the phone, and we said, do you know about this incident? He said, I'm sorry, we don't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> and so at the end of that round, Danny's team have one point, and Gary's team have four. In our what's going on round, we ask the question, what's going on? David's team, we go back to 1982 for you and a test match between England and India. Uh, can you explain this palaver? When, when you said palaver, was that long sleeved or sleeveless? <laughs> You've mistaken with palava for pullover there, haven't you, for comic effect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe for one second you were confused. <laughs> you know in cricket you've got that position, silly don, are they demonstrating a new one, specky twat off? <laughs> No? Um. no. Did you actually see how he was dressed? He looked like a young conservative. Yeah. And it's the only way I think they can hold on to his seat. Oh, <laughs> my <word. laughs> No flies on me. You've come to the wrong studio. You should be a Have I Got News for You. <laughs> Is it like some new kind of streaking for the incredibly shy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, not only would they just go out with their clothes, but they have to have some furniture with them as well. <laughs> because he actually went on one time, he, he streaked, he went on with a chest of drawers, and it's confused the police because they needed 16 helmets to cover his knobs. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like... I mean, Chris Tavro was the batsman, he didn't like Tav, who... Absolutely correct, for three points, yeah. And it was Stato, yeah, it's Angus Locker, who later became Stato. Um, the batsman was Chris Tavare, who was scoring so slowly that the young Stato decided to offer him a stool on the basis that, since he was obviously too tired to run between the wickets, he must be in need of sit-down. <laughs> Running between the wickets never tired our David out, but the two men carrying the sedan chair was exhausted. <laughs> Gary's team now. Here's the current Wales manager, Bobby Gould, delivering one of the longest sentences you'll ever hear. For professional footballers, the past four days since their last game has been an important period because as I am sure you can appreciate, the heat that they played in against Everton is where the players do sweat. Well, at least I hope they do anyway. And the preparation for today's game would have been a professional ideology because I as a manager must make sure their recovery period makes them as fit as possible as they can be to go out to those Oxford today and that they have no lethargic apprehensions either mentally or physically because they are at the end of the day believe it or not they're only human beings but also professionally and Van Howe and myself would have made sure that the preparations for today's match is that nobody can turn around and say the preparation for today's game is not right <laughs> Some new humane way of putting animals to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's not humane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have the lethal injection? <laughs> Something to do with his um, his program notes, isn't it? He yes. writes program notes, and they were famously boring and famously without any punctuation. And I think somebody asked somebody asked him to to read them out. Just sit up into sentences, please. <laughs> read them out. Was it about um, the programme notes that were really boring and they never <laughs> got before stops? Yes, correct, for three points. Something to do with the plain English society, didn't it? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. three points for what that. What did they do? Have a fire bomb his house. 
The answer is that Bobby Gould has just won the Plain English Society's Gobbledygook Award for 1987 for that sentence in his Wimbledon programme notes. Bobby Gould is currently Wales' manager, but he still has ambitions to manage at a higher level if that job at Rumblows ever comes up. <laughs> His team have seven. <laughs> Our next round is devoted to publicity pictures. We show the teams a couple of photos and ask them to explain what persuaded the sports people to become involved. David, you're first. So, that's former world and Olympic 400 metre hurdle champion Sally Gunnell. But what's the picture all about? She's heard, you do hurdling in your event as I well, dear. Mm -hmm. And it's true that when you hurdle, the coach always says you've got to keep as close to the yeah. hurdle as possible. Yeah. 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 And this is a new training method, which is to try and design so you get as close to the hurdle as you can, but if you smell hair burning, you're too close. <laughs> I used to hurdle by doing handstands. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea though, is it? It's not. Well, I think Sally, Sally runs for Essex Ladies. And you know what to say about Essex Ladies? No. 20 fags and a quick leg over kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Was it in that Good. order? You got the order right? <laughs> Maybe it's 50 fags, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, David was 50 fags a day, man, weren't you? At school. <laughs> Did you have fags at school? <laughs> Did you? Did you say I've just put one out? <laughs> I think a lot of these sexual frustration jokes are really about yourself, aren't they? If you want to talk about it, Lee? Talk well, to me. Yeah, right, let's go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to take all night. <laughs> I definitely think it's some anti-smoking something anyway. Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah? That's enough. Uh, yeah, the photo was actually taken in 1992 to persuade people to use the nicotine patch instead of cigarettes. Kissing a smoker is said to be like licking an ashtray. In fact, Rory McGrath is so desperate, he's got to blow up ashtray in his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Steen, it's that barrel of laughs Nigel Mansell for you, but what's the reason for this photo? He's saying to that cabbie, I had a gypsy in, on the back of my cab once. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he move to the Isle of Man as a tax dodger? Now I think that's the dodging, uh, the, that's the fairground owner, isn't it? Saying, get all these taxis off my dodging track. <laughs> Taking my train. Yeah. Yeah. That Clive Sinclair's aged badly, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a safer driving campaign? Simply, simple as that. Yeah, it's actually Nigel Mansell with Lord Montague of Bewley in a still from a training film aimed at encouraging young people to drive safely. Nigel Mansell, a man so dull that Chris Taveray once brought on a stool during one of his races. <laughs> Lord Montague and David Gower, by the way, are near neighbours in Hampshire. In fact, they often chat to each other over the garden moat. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few Conservative successes last week, the Conservatives held David Gower's garden. <laughs> <laughs> Although I should point out that that was David Gower's garden west. Uh, <laughs> David Gower's garden east went Labour, and that's what happens when you allow the staff to vote. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David has seven points. Sorry. Sorry, mate. No, sorry. no, no, I was just saying. He's no, I the whole class want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David... I was just going to say... Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I can wait. I can wait. No, 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 it's not important. Don't at the end, Jeff. <laughs> At the, end, at the end of that round, David's team have seven points and Gary's team... All I was going to say... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to do that. He's chugged all his forelock off. Then <laughs> <laughs> I'm a free man. <laughs> at the end of this round, David's team have seven and Gary's team have ten. <laughs> It's now time for our teams to fondle the famous as we play Feel the Sportsman. David and Lee, you're first. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear.
I hope you don't think that's funny. <laughs> if only I had three hands. <laughs> now you have 90 seconds to identify a sports star without peaking. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? And your 90 seconds start now. Just want to say, you said identify them without peaking. Yeah. <laughs> Why would oh. I want the ch <laughs> Because it's called Beijing. <laughs> right, I bet I still don't know the sport. <laughs> Blimey. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, Lee, what's this? It's a oh! <laughs> How many, What's going on here? Just yeah. think, how, how many are there? How many are going there? To be? That's for well, me to I'm know and you to find out. Well, I've got to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, I felt the bat on. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Whoever, whoever this bloke is, he's not grow his hair quick, doesn't he? <laughs> 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 Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I oh, know, yeah, right. hang on, I oh, know this. I oh, know this. That's Jamie, isn't it? Is it, is it the relay team? That's right. Which relay team? Ah, four, oh, you four, five, 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 one, four. Four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Murray, oh. you're about to take your position. Oh. Right, Lee? Yeah, Roy, you keeping well? Very well, thank you. Excellent. What are you up to today? Uh, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm working. Tonight. All right. Yeah. <laughs> thought you good on the crystal maze. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, can we have our second mystery guest, please? What did you say, Lee? Hey, mate, you'd have been quicker bloody walking! <laughs> Okay, your 90 seconds start now. Not Stephen Hawkins, is it? <laughs> no, no. <coughs> Sorry, you've not ordered another pizza. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Stop being a wham again. Yeah, 12 inch meat treat. <laughs> Who'd you say? <laughs> I'm both only four inches, really. Watch the not be an exhaust. <laughs> I've touched the helmet, Gary. Have you? <laughs> we took oh something metal. Oh, it's Barry Sheen. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. He's retired. Well, the bike's retired. It's, uh, is it? It's an, old, it's an old bike, actually. I've owned a few of those in my time. <laughs> Antique bike. Is it an old Speedway? You know, think Speedway people. Possibly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary, you're old. You used to watch Speedway at Leicester, didn't you? Um, yeah. Um, During the game. Ivan Major. <laughs> Ivan Major. Barry nope. Briggs. Nope. Uh, Come on. Peter Collins. Uh, yes! Yes? Yeah. At the end of that round, David's team have 10 and Gary's team have 13. <laughs> we finish as usual with the fag jumping Bunsen burning name game. This week, all the answers are names of teams from around the world. Winning team goes first, which at the moment is Gary's. So, Roy, you'll be doing those. Pass them along. Teams. Teams, yes. <laughs> Gary, a team is when people play together rather than for their own personal glory. 
Oh, really? Excuse me, Gary, can I, can I get in? Oh, OK, but if you go there, I can't see them. Uh, OK, <laughs> okay. you're 90 seconds. Not looking to start now. Normally they have the answer. Uh, football team, Brian Robson managing them. They're going down. <laughs> um, this is, uh, um, it's what you, first part of this word is what all footballers have two of. Knees, feet, oh, what, 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 what's one feet called? <laughs> and the second part is is uh, what you're not going to, what you don't have to do for a living, Gary. Work. 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 Yeah. Work. Work. Very good. This is a team just been promoted in Ches Ches Cheshire, I think. Um, Sammy McElroy manages them. Macclesfield, oh, Macclesfield. Uh, Belgian team, I think. Um, thingy plays for them, the Nigerian. Oh, Anderlecht. Anderlecht. That's right. <laughs> this is a uh, rugby league team. I think they lost to Saints on Saturday. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Bradford. Yeah. Bradford Bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... What does the football team consist of, Gary? Um, a striker. Yeah, how many? Eleven <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> yeah, no, not eleven blokes. Eleven... Eleven men. Men. Yeah. And they're on a plane. What are, what are you if you're on a plane? You're flying. Uh, you're, uh, yeah. In the air. In the air. In the air. In flight. In, 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 in flight. In flight. In flight. In flight. What? You buy them off insurance companies. Uh, policy. 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 The opposite of minor. The opposite of minus. Um, plus. plus. Policy plus. And, plus and policy. a small town in uh, West Cambridgeshire named after a Cornish saint. Saint Neot. <laughs> yeah, very good. Policy plus. <laughs> <laughs> is it, rugby, uh, your rugby. Is it Arsenal? <laughs> very good. Uh, okay, you moved on to 20, so you need 10 to draw level. Okay, your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> Uh, I'm forever blowing bubbles. It's not Michael Jackson. <laughs> your, your club. No, not your club. Yes, your club, I think. Athletics club. Virtual Harriers. Correct. <laughs> uh, uh, what's his name? Lost the battle here. Napoleon. And uh, we've got a station Waterman. there. Correct. Um, if I was picking up a book and reading, it would sound very similar I'm to this football team. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading. Yes, correct. Yes, yes, yes. Well done. Uh, this one is something they might have done at your school. <laughs> His school or my school? Uh, sorry, it's Dave's school. They'd have oh. all been naked and there would have been no equipment involved. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? The, the third name is, if you're not a man, you are a... Woman. woman. No, younger. 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 Girl. No. <laughs> How much younger do you want to be, baby? Or no. Something? Don't call me baby in public. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Embryo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're not, um, you're a man, but before that you are a... Boy. Correct. And if you were not a young man, you'd be a... Old fart. Young fart. Old fart. <laughs> and the first word, oh, what's his name would do it? Sir Lancelot. They'd go along with a big pole and stab. No, not, yeah, but what well, is it they do when poke, they... Stab. Poke. Yeah, poke. Stab along. Yeah, poke. Yeah, it's well known. King Arthur and they go and have a poke. Look, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Guinevere was there. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you didn't manage to catch up, obviously. And that means that, David, you finished with 14 points, but Gary's team are the winners with 20. <laughs> so, our thanks to David Lee and Denise, Gary, Rory and Jeff. We're all off to see if Sebco is still too busy to come on the show. <laughs> I'm Nick Hancock. <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. Stay here with BBC One Jim Davidson's Ingram 101 next.